Hello, this is Forrest. I am here to speak to you today about some certain shenanigans that I pull off once a year uh, with hacking college kids and telling you exactly how they do it wrong. Let's go ahead and get right into the slides. So if you want more information about me, you're welcome to look at jrwr.io. I'll be happy to uh, provide guidance. I have a contact page in sorts. You can get a hold of me on Twitter of sorts. Um, so what I do, well, I should say, who am I? Some of you have probably seen me floating around DEF CON before. I am Hatchan, pretty much. Everybody knows me of this uh, this crazy hat of mine. It's a pith helmet with Wi-Fi access point on it. Everybody generally loves it. But I've done a couple of other weird things over the years. Uh, right now, I'm a Department of Defense subcontractor, uh, cybersecurity auditor. So pretty much I... I do audits for small, mili you know, small military mil manufacturers. You know, they make parts, whatever, and they do it terribly. Usually, it's rather boring, though. It's for NIST 800171. If you want to look up that and tomfoolery. Uh, at one point, I was a Dogecoin mining pool operator in Sysadmin for a fundraiser for the Doge car. That was also awesome, and that's also where the pith helmet comes from. Was way back then. Um, as you can see, the, the Doge card was amazing. You should Google it. There's some videos out there of me, you know, being chased uh, with, with a beer cooler because I had to steal it for some ice shenanigans. But for this talk, the really relevant is that I've been a red team member for NECCDC for about three years now. It's Northeast Colgate Cyber Defense Competition. Um, the basics of the competition is that there is a blue team, which is college students, uh, being thrusted into a um, a network of sorts, right? A standardized business network that they would come across, and they have to do all the things. So it's several teams of students from local regions uh, of, for for the Northeast Corridor, and there, there's there's others for for each region. And so it, they're kind of like an emergency blue team, right? So they, they come in and they have to fix the network, whatever is wrong with it, right? To get it stable. They have a list of services that they have to keep online. Um, we've already been given about an hour already to attack them as red team before they could even get hands on keyboard the night before. So we've got all of our implants in place to make sure they're nice and imponed. Um, generally, it's a two-day event. Uh, the Red Team is a group of chosen pen testers and InfoSec nerds. Uh, generally, it's from um, mostly people who've been working with a professor that's running at Daryl Johnson, uh, at least for the Northeast Corridor. Uh, Daryl's great. He goes to RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, and uh, they, they run the red team. So there are other teams of, you know, black and white support as well. White teams is, you know, people in the rooms that help the teams out, kind of, you know, just basic support roles, filing tickets if something explodes, things of that sort, things get fired. Uh, the black team is the one who actually manages the uh, infrastructure. Um, making sure that everything's up and running and, and such. They generally have physical hardware that they're dealing with. The previous one, they did not, of course, because it was virtual. But uh, the last two years, which is what we'd be covering, 2019 to 2018, um, it was in person. And we could really fuck with the hardware uh, with implants. So on top of defending themselves from Red Team, they also have to do other things that are worth points, and some of it's worth a lot of points, right? Um, there's incident response, right? So they have to write up a report stating that, um, you know, this is how we were compromised, or this is what happened, you know, this is the current state of the system, this is what we did to fix it, um, and such. And these are called injects. Maybe it's it's a request from the CEO to do something like change his password or allow him VPN access. Black team's always throwing them new stuff to do. And those are worth a good amount of points. Those are considered daily operation stuff, right? Stuff you'd have to do on a day-to-day -day basis as somebody who is blue team or just general IT in the network. So then uh, from there, um, scoring is really based off of how long Red Team had access, the reports made, and the services kept alive. And the scoring of the services is automated, and we fucked with that as well, you know, ARP spoofing and such. 
Uh, so the first hour that we get access to the network, um, we infect everything. We have all of their passwords in a table already. So we have scripts in place. First thing we do is hit enter, infects everything that we can get a hold of. And we do all the crazy. Uh, Cobalt Strike, which a lot of you might know from your toolkits, was actually written for any CCDC by Raphael Mudge. Great guy, by the way, if you ever meet him at DEF CON, he does float around there. Dude is crazy good at it. Uh, he does these DNS slow burn beacons. So he'll like stack beacons on top of one another. So he'll do these really fast HTTP beacons, but then he'll have these beacons to like a special domain that he's only registered for this, uh, where it only pulls once every six hours. Right, so if they haven't removed it from the system, they're not going to notice the traffic, and then he uses that to pivot more beacons into the system for the faster ones, and that's the ones we work off of generally. He provides the team server, and and we you know futz with the system from there. Um, he does you know uh, DNS fronting, IMCP pings, uh, uh, beacons, IPv6 based. Uh, uh, beacons we've done once before. That was fun because the Palo Altos don't filter that very well. Um, but if you use Cobalt Strike, now you know why some of the features are like the way they are. Because in all reality, you know, at least from what I understand from Mudge, uh, it was written for any CCDC. And it, it was solving a problem that Armitage just wasn't solving, right? So he was improving Armitage and he just got better with it and he started selling it as a product because it was it was a good idea you know we disable the antivirus infect the networking hardware you know like the palo alto their switches their firewalls uh we have access to it all so we just go to town uh you know we have full access to practically everything we have the domain admin password so we just start deploying everything that we have in our arsenal um, so if, if you think of every single piece of kit that you can deploy against what you have as domain admin for persistence, we generally do it, right? We have a team of about 15. We're having to manage, uh, I, th last, I think it was 10 teams last year. So we do have to kind of, it really is a high workload. That's why there's, there's a lot of um, grouping and stuff like that in, in Cobalt is because we have to do it on a per team basis. We have to score per team. Uh, I personally like doing Linux backdoors because I'm a Linux nerd. I do all kinds of futzy things. Um, for instance, uh, um, you know, PAM backdoors and things of that sort. And we'll, we'll cover that here in a moment. Um, but we try to keep low and we watch as teams try to find us, right? Like a lot of times their services just go down because they're, they're just breaking it for themselves, right? Like we're just persisting. So what we'll do is steal some passwords. The Cobalt Strike Keylogger is amazing for this. Uh, we will um, steal some SSH keys, the AWS keys, if they're doing cloud that year. Um, they love just leaving them on your Linux boxes, right? And where else are gonna put it? <laughs> um, We'll reinfect using where we can. Some of the common backdoors that we use, we have an IIS backdoor that was written. Um, I don't think it's publicly released, uh, but it is signed um, using unleaked uh, certificates whenever he actually had a code signing cert, but they wouldn't renew it on him this year. Some PAM SSH backdoors, we've been using that thing forever. Uh, still get students, we can just log in with whatever password you want as root. Uh, bash backdoors, these are my specialty. I've actually recompiled uh, bash for systems and placed backdoors with just phone home. It just run an extra curl command and, and pipe that into uh, whatever. Uh, I've also been doing DNS backdoors that way with, um, there's a environmental variable that you can set. I can't remember right offhand, but there's an environmental variable that you can set where it it's a callback. It's supposed to be the missing command callback or just a command callback, and it'll run it after every successful command. So you just run that every time, right? You set it in the ETC profile. Nobody ever looks at their at their environmental variables for compromises, right? Not for two years at least. <laughs> uh, we were piping dig directly into bash for that. Um, we're doing TXT records and just shoving shell in there and waiting for them to show up on their firewall. It wasn't like we were encrypting it or anything. Uh, 
Um, a lot of these times we'll have monitoring in place like Splunk, and we'll just backdoor it. Uh, we got a guy who's a, or we, we call our Splunk nerd, and he has a custom application that he'll attach to their Splunk instance. And um, what he'll do is then it'll become his managed instance. So they're all kind of upstream to a centralized um, orchestra system. And he just manages everybody's Splunk for him. So he can do deployment payloads that way. Most team members don't notice that this is happening. Um, it's, it's very, very stealthy. And it's great. It, from what I understand, the code for it's relatively easy to implement. You could just take one of the sample applications and just have it be managed by something else. Uh, you're gonna play payloads through it. Um, most of the time they don't notice it's happening and you'll see that in some of the screenshots as well that it's coming down through Splunk. Um, we'll backdoor the Palo Alto, um, put our own accounts in. There's certain hacks that particularly happen with um, some of the web interface. They'll add little uh, JavaScript snippets that report home. A lot of times these get blocked because they're just blocking all HTTP traffic at this point, but we'll actually inject custom theming uh, where it, uh, it'll it send their, when they change the password through the web interface, it sends it back to us. Um, I have a thing where I'll do, uh, I'll backdoor all the elves on, on a file system. Like I'll take BusyBox, um, take all, you know, full compile it, put the backdoor in there, it just runs the command through DNS again. Um, compile it. Sim link it all out into, into the Debian system real fast. So anytime they run an application at all, it gets compromised and it links back to um, the BusyBox parameter. And I futz with their path a little bit and I I'm point it, I rearrange it so that it's in like user local bin is first. <laughs> right? So you set that first, you throw a busy box in there, they'll never find it. Uh, nobody, whoever looks in user local bin, come on, right? So um, we'll also do some, some tomfoolery. If we notice that they're trying to install detection tools, right, on Windows or Linux, uh, especially on Linux, they'll try to compile stuff, we'll backdoor it. We have the C backdoors that we just throw in any application offhand, and we'll just, you can find them on GitHub, they're everywhere. You just throw them in there, and then they, just, you, they compile it, and they run it. It's backdoored now, the rootkit hunter is backdoored. Um, mind you, we only have two days, so we're just throwing anything that we can that'll stick, right? So, um, if we see somebody being clever, we'll just blue screen the box, right? Like, we're not going to deal with any of their shit. You know, they're trying to be clever. They're, they're going through process mon, you know, proc mon and going, uh, nope, and then crash the box, right? We'd rather just crash the box before they get a hold of our loot. Um, this is, you know, very rapid, you know, this over the happen over a course of, you know, a couple of hours, we'll, we'll spot the screenshots coming in through Cobalt Strike. We're like, well, he's up to no good. Eh, just crash the box. <laughs> we'll reboot it. That'll be fine. But maybe put some dancing bananas on the screen. We'll get later to that. Uh, sometimes we like to do annoyance. A lot of annoyance really kind of uh, annoys some of the teams. Like there's some teams that really like to use Tmux. And we'll replace it with screen. You can't run Tmux. Oh, but if you try to run screen, it just dev you randoms your terminal. Um, but if you try to run Emadex, it'll actually open Vim. And if you try to open Vim, it opens up Nano, which is super fun. Uh, they really hate that when you do that to somebody who's trying to remediate a box and his commands keep changing out underneath them. Um, and they're trying to figure out how are you in the box? You're not even showing up. Well, we have a TTY in there through Metasploit or something like that. And we're just pop, you know, we're just screwing with you. Um, automation is key though, right? If you're popping this many boxes, we're having to handle over a hundred boxes. Uh, automation is key until you start noticing somebody trying to be clever and you go and futz with them for a couple of minutes. We'll reconfigure their DNS uh, to make them distracted. We'll just drop their DNS into a black hole. Uh, our beacons still work, but their DNS doesn't, right? They'll be pointing to our DNS servers, which drop everything but our beacons. Um, we've, we've screwed up a couple of teams doing that. That was super fun. Uh, reconfigure the Palo Alto right underneath them. 
right? They keep adding a block rule, we'll drop that block rule, or we'll reconfigure it, that block rule where it doesn't work. Uh, the order is out of place, and the allow rule is just stuck up there, and all the block rules don't work, you know, or order of operations. Um, and we'll reconfigure services to bring them down, right? And that's part of the scoring, you know, we don't have a particular score ourselves, but we want to make them score as least as they can for all the teams. So we'll um, we'll add, we'll deface web pages, we'll deface their backgrounds, we'll deface uh, services, anything that we can get a hold of. Most services are scored with ping, SSH, and then maybe the contents of the web page itself, right? So if it doesn't match a checksum, then it's considered down and we'll, we'll deface them, bring them down. Uh, my personal favorite was, was uninstalling Nginx and replacing it with Apache, kind of configuring it right, and then just leaving it half broken and letting them to fix it. So, I mean, you know, trying to get as much time as you can to leave them, leave your main beacons alone, have them misdirected, right? You want them to kind of focus on, on the craziness that is happening. So uh, this is going faster than I expected, but hey, it's, it's working. So day two is when the fun really starts, right? Because we don't really want to blow up their boxes on the first day, but we do want to do it on day two. So we install the new backdoors, anything that we cooked up overnight, because we don't sleep, right? That's, that's what caffeine's for. Uh, and then we just activate all my prank scripts. Uh, I started doing that when I first joined. I just, I had some on hand. Um, rotate their screen. We'll, we'll see some of these, by the way. I got a little treat for you. Uh, rotate their screen by, by 90 degrees every 30 seconds. Makes it really hard to admin a box. Um, dancing bananas all over the screen. It's actually a fork bomb I written. You can see an example of that in the bottom right hand corner. Them trying to kill it and it's not working. 500% um, sized mouse. Super funny when it happens. Uh, they can't really use the mouse because it's slightly broken, but uh, it, it's good fun. Um, bad keyboard inputs. Uh, you know, now they're Dorvac. G good luck. Uh, you can't change it now, by the way. We, we've we've disallowed administrators from changing that registry key. You're going to have to change the ACL on that. Sorry, <laughs> you're going to have to go find it. Um, ACLs are very powerful in Windows for registry keys. You can set some insanity in there and make it where they can't remove your shit unless they they actually go in and rip those ACLs out, right? Um, so if you had like, uh, I had one where as part of the banana script actually is it there's a list of process image names it's the debugger key you go look up the image name debugger key and you can do some really backdoor shit and it just won't run programs it'll say program not found or in my particular instance every time you run the program it would just spawn a new banana um task manager procmon uh, a lot of the av software that they were trying to run uh, would kind of be dynamic with it you know so you know we kind of work with it um generally it was uh, uh kind of a dynamic environment on day two trying to really screw with them because they had a lot to think about right like they're really trying to keep their services up from us because you know they have 15 people going on and, and they're just you know they're a team of eight um later on in the day we'll really start screwing with services memes you know defacing backgrounds things like that really let them know that we're home um deleting files programs changing passwords right we'll delete files underneath them we'll when they're writing a report um we'll uh we'll just delete it right there in front of them <laughs> we're so mean uh <laughs> But that's what makes it so much fun. You got to try something. So we'll, we'll delete stuff they're writing. Um, they're drawing something in MS Paint. We'll, uh, we'll draw something for them, and they freak out because we're controlling their computer. Uh, we'll start Googling things for them on their own computer. That's super fun. You know, brick rolling them, things like that. You know, just opening up URLs, sending them helpful messages, offering help. Ransoming the domain controller for donuts. It was the funnest thing we've done. Um, we did that a couple of times where we would ransom a service and we'd want donuts and they would have to go and hunt down donuts. 
um, or other various uh, things for us. Uh, we had a dance off um, to get your domain controller back after we had pwned like six of them. The Air Force One. <laughs> Uh, so, as you can see, this is the most fun you'll ever have as Red Team. Ever. Two days of packed full of craziness. But it gets better. So after we've done all the shenanigans, there's a slight story here. So if you look on the very, very bottom there, there is uh, a search warrant. We had one year, the local, the local police department decided that uh, they were going to help out. And uh, we asked them, hey, you want to do a no-knock raid on some of the students' rooms? Uh, so we coordinated that with them, and they did it for all the teams. They raided and took their domain controller, just stole it. <laughs> Came in there, uh, looking all official, scared the crap out of most of them. Ah, oh, it was great, though. It was, it was hilarious the whole time. Uh, there is some video of this I will show you later. Um, but uh, shenanigans, lots and lots of shenanigans, the most shenanigans you'll ever have being a red teamer. So the burn, right? This is the last hour, right? This is the last, and we're, we're, we're nuking the discs. We're, you know, you can see here, we're doing RMRF, no preserve route, screw the disc, you know, DDI, uh, DDU random the disc, blue screen the boxes, delete the AWS account. It doesn't like when you do that, by the way. Uh, nine cat their bootloaders, anything that we could do to destroy their systems or their neural longer, anything that we have access to left is destroyed. Nuclear, right? So after all of this is you know done, we tell them what we did, right? We, we actually sit down with them with every team and say, well, okay, so you're team seven. Well, you kept giving us your passwords to the key loggers. You never found the PAM backdoor, right? It's it's here, it's, it's here every year. We told you this last year. <laughs> um, you know, you you didn't you didn't block us, right? Were you checking for DNS traffic or you were too busy doing injects or did your firewall guy not to look because he was a new guy? Did he not check for DNS traffic? Did he not check for IMCP traffic? Things of that sort. So we'd actually sit down with them and tell them what they did wrong. A lot of it was they just weren't looking. You know, anybody with Wireshark and a mirror port can really see us. Like when 90% of the traffic coming out of your box is DNS and it's like gigs of it, you have a problem. And a lot of times they just don't block it. I always said, but if you had a good firewall guy, somebody who had Wireshark open, mirror port, just streaming logs, right? Maybe booted off of live CD or something that they'd be able to find us, right? We're very noisy, right? Maybe those is long-term beacons. Maybe not, but you just do standard incident response. And you know, most of our stuff is detected, right? Cobalt strike is super detectable. You know, you open a proc mod and you see the crap that's going on, and, and I'll ask, right? Kick, a, kick us out as fast as you can, right? Even if you bring services down in incident response. And mind you, this is a compressed time frame, and this kind of goes for most incident response, right? Uh, don't be afraid to turn off the network. I mean, even if it's just, a, you know, 10 minutes, right, to get your bearings um, and start looking at traffic, you know, hands off keyboard plug the ethernet back in, see what's happening, right? See what's 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 talking. Track, track those traces down, kick us out. Because if you kick us out, we can't get back in. If we don't have your passwords, we don't have any beacons, we're not getting back in, right? Like we have some of the back doors and sometimes they stay, but a lot of the older ones, you know, they're all picked up by AV nowadays. So, but a lot of it is they just haven't had a lot of experience with dealing with these computers and dealing with systems like this, right? Like they, they're, they're in a system administration role trying to do security and they're all, all they've been taught is security. So, and they got to treat the operating system as hostile. They're not doing that most of the time, right? They trust in the permission, they trust in the files they're leaving on the system. They're trusting their backups. We've infected the backups. We've done that. They're going to restore from a backup 
and we'll reinfect them again because it's an old password. And, and we always try the old passwords, right? Like, this is how it works. So, you know, most people just trying to get the air out about what we're doing, right? It's really easy to spot us once you know what we're doing because we're up to all kinds of shenanigans. And so... It, it, it's it's not it's not we're not doing anything revolutionary here most of this stuff is just a grab bag of anything that we can find off of github for the most part i mean cobalt strikes really nice and we do write some shenanigans for some of the scripts but really though we're not doing anything particularly special but year after year and we have student we have teams we have teams that are amazing at this right um, they'll kick us out in 15 minutes and maybe we'll get back in second day, right? Um, maybe they'll fall for a phishing email. <laughs> We've had that happen once. Or we'll steal something from their room. Um, they're supposed to, there's physical security kind kind of involved. We keep it, you know, we don't do it that much, but we'll steal a laptop or, you know, or you know, give it back to them with put this XP on it and expect them to use it because there, there was a service on it. So, um, uh, I, I have I have videos I'm going to show you. I'm going to talk over them. I'm not going to play the terrible music that's on them. Both of these are on YouTube. You can look up any CCDC, uh, and you can find all of our, all of our previous years videos right they're not very long uh and they really showcase some of the payloads that we're getting back right in a lot better way than i can show so um i'm gonna play number one here so this is from 2019 um i'm gonna just a smidgen ahead here so we had backdoored the wi-fi router uh it was um we just get a custom update server uh, here they're Googling how to do security, um, you know, Wi-Fi passwords. So we got a little bit of a backdoor stream from white team and they'll post in the Slack some of the things that they find from us, but ah, red team, you know, passwords through the key loggers. And you can see, you know, we, uh, uh, we really, it's just password discipline is so terrible with these people sometimes. Um, you know, they're trying to track us down in Procmon and management corp.beaver. I don't think it's supposed to be that. You know, we're futzing with their, with their DNS. Um, you know, changing their administrative passwords because uh, if they don't know it, might as well we run it. King Size Mouse was ran on a couple of machines. You can see it here in action in Cobalt Strike. Uh, makes the machine very hard to use, but you can get rid of it. Um, they're trying to figure out why uh, their DNS has been changed to another server because it's ours now. Um, Yeah, we, we were dropping some Rick rolls on them uh, several times. Uh, a lot of kids, they just don't, they just don't know the memes. Uh, yeah, we did that a couple of times. We'll change out the Wi-Fi password, uh, the Wi-Fi AP to what their, what their password was. Just to, just to show we care. <laughs> That's our little Wi-Fi. So we were, we had a back door, but they had to keep Wi-Fi up. And so we had a little Wi-Fi router up that we were actually using as a backdoor. We were getting all the teams with it. You know, making some puns and jokes and things of that sort. We, we did it a lot. Um, uh, sometimes they'll accidentally paste the password in a Slack. Don't do that. <laughs> um, there's Splunk is being managed by Red Team. That's a pretty common problem. This is all set to terrible music that I'd rather not play. Um, them trying to install security essentials. Are they not teaching them what accounts as antivirus on Windows nowadays? Uh, AVG does not work on Windows Server. Sorry. Uh, you really should turn that on. And setting your password is not going to do any good if we have a key logger on the box, right? 
Um, we'll send them helpful messages, you know, to annoy them that we see them that they're editing their firewall and it's not doing any good. Um, more passwords, of course. Uh, really, the keylogger is, and keyloggers are so old school, right? Like, oh, who installs a keylogger? But they just give every time. Really look into installing keyloggers if you're popping a box. More dancing bananas shenanigans, as usual. Uh, I always like to drop them on boxes that we kind of have access to that haven't done anything on in a while, um, or just to show us the proof that we're we're in their box, right? We want to give them that little tickler that uh, we're, we're still futzing with their systems. Uh, they try killing it, but it, each banana is a separate process. So if they don't know how to mass kill stuff, then malware bites ain't gonna help you. Uh, you can see here they're they're actively being ran. Mind you, these these recap videos are made like an hour before the competition ends, so they're made in a rush. Ah, more helpful me messages of Banana Man. They weren't killing them fast enough, so I just kept spawning more of them just to annoy them. Um, Banana itself is not backdoored. Uh, it does change some... Um, uh, yes, yakety. So this is this is it rotating by ninety degrees every thirty seconds, and we actually got video from one of the white team. And they had these ultra wide monitors making it super stupid. Um, it's just you know, oh, it works fine now, but eh, give it thirty seconds and it won't. Uh, they're trying to figure out how to kill it, and I'm playing yakety sax over their over their uh, audio at the same time. They still haven't closed it. <laughs> Uh, we do this to all the teams. This is the one we got video of. And so <laughs> it just cracks me up every time I watch it. Um, you know, we give them some encouragement. They get demoralized very quickly. Um, but uh, we'll actually back off of people that we have access to towards the end there, uh, mostly because, you know, kicking the puppy while it's down we don't like to do that too terribly much but you know more bananas on it on write-ups is super great oh yeah now nothing's infected bananas everywhere <laughs> um they write on the board sometimes we'll we'll steal passwords off the whiteboards we'll, we'll take photos from cracks in the walls and stuff uh more bananas uh just spawn i have one that'll just fork bomb a machine to the point where it just won't run anymore <laughs> Um, a team challenged us saying, hey, we don't have any bananas on ours. Yeah, give it 10 minutes. Um, yeah, you really shouldn't be killing SVC hosts. Uh, we, they had sign-in cheats, and we did actually sign in as Red Team, and nobody checked. Um, they're trying to run Clam AV on the box, and that's not going to do any good. The definitions are too old. These are examples of some of the injects. Um, some of it is quite going fast, but uh, you know, more more words of encouragement. At this at this particular point, right, they got so much stuff running that it's it's starting to bog down their boxes. But you know, they'll give us keys, and really, we're just googling stuff better than them. Uh, we're, we're letting you know them know that they're. The box is still popped. There's really the WAP. That's what they had in the rooms. One of the teams did that. Um, yeah, so we stole the laptops and we gave them Windows XP. It was great. We put all of our malware on it too. And uh, we stole it without them knowing. It was great. <laughs> all the teams did not notice that we had stolen their laptop. And we just gave it back to them. Uh, some encouragement from remote tech support. Um, so this one, so they're doing some role playing here. So this guy is yelling at them. And if you watch the video on YouTube, it's a little bit better, but this guy's yelling at him like, well, why did he steal the laptop? Didn't you like record it down? Like, who was this person? And, and, and like, well, I mean, and, and, you know, the, the student doesn't know what the hell's going on at this point, right? Like he doesn't know how to respond. So the students are given real world scenarios like, well, what the fuck? why did the laptop walk off right so he's trying to explain himself and it's 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 not very good 
he's trying to figure out well did they just steal it from underneath your keyboard like how did this work why did you give him the laptop and why is he playing tetris i had tetris did it hit bootloader <laughs> uh so uh, that that happens so many times, right? We we hardly get to see that as red team, but here's us imaging them all. Somebody actually had an image for this laptop for Windows XP, and they just downloaded it from work. <laughs> um, and we kept, we were getting beacons off of them. Um, so we this is some of the searches and typings that's coming in while well, we still have beacons for days. Uh, bad passwords at this point, they've changed their password six, seven, eight times, and they're just done, right? Like, oh, he, uh, we, we, we made good friends with him. He's going to pwn his own box, but unfortunately the beacon had disconnected. So, uh, but, uh, he was one of the team members. He, uh, he'd wanted the dance off to get his domain controller back. <laughs> so it's like, here, you can pwn your domain controller again. Um, they had sign in sheets. We were signing in with anything and everything under the sun, and <laughs> nobody was checking in when they should have been. They got scored against that, too. Um, we're starting to delete things now, and it, it, it's just out of control at this point, right? So, you know, CEO is asking, Why are you playing Tetris? We still run gateways. I thought we all had Dells. <laughs> because their gateway was down. They didn't have internet because we nuked the Palo Alto. Uh, more bananas just because uh, uh, wall messages back and forth, um, you know, chatting with the teammates going, you know, can we pop, can we pop your box? And as always, women are technical and capable of breathing fire. <laughs> Definitely so. Ah, so this one's where, you know, the network is down and he's losing money. And uh, he's yelling at the teammates going, well, what's going on? Like, I'm not going to sell the other house in the Hamptons. I'm going to fire you first. <laughs> Classic CEO speak. And he just walks out. Um, we saw Mr. Dino a lot of times. You'll still have beacons. Oh, this is the group shot. Uh, this is all the red team for 2019. You can see me there in the corner, Mudge in the center. So, you know, uh, I don't remember half these people's names at this particular point. We don't meet that often, but uh, I have a mug with all their names on it, though. Daryl's on the left there, um, but this is who they have to defend themselves against, right? There's Silas. He used to work at Virus Total. He used to, he would weaponize malware that he would that he would get in from Google and Virus Total and sick it on students. The madman. <laughs> he he would neuter it, right? Uh, there was an incident, uh, but he he would neuter it and and repurpose it for students. So he would actually infect them with malware. Just the beacons were going back to him instead. Crazy, crazy fellow. Um, yeah, most of these guys are networking engineers. Most of them aren't even red team. You know, they, they aren't like, this is what they do as red team. They're more dangerous because they're in the field every day, right? They're, they're networking engineers, Splunk engineers, but they know the full depth of those applications. They know what they can do. And then you take that and twist it. That's what I think is fundamental to being a red teamer, right? You know how that stuff's supposed to work. And then you twist it to your needs, your evil, evil needs to do what you needed to do, right? Um, you have much more scope availability. You have um, ability to hide better if you know more about what, what you're dealing with, especially with applications. Well, I've just talked about Miroff. Um, We'll go ahead and go on to the second video here. Skip ahead a little. This is from 2018. Um, more shenanigans, um, you know, giving us their keys for AWS. Uh, yeah, yes, we would persist with a team call, uh, with a team name called uh, White Team on the box. Uh, they had to go in through the serial console that year, and they really didn't understand what was going on. <laughs> they didn't know it was serial. Um, I think they were trying to screw with each other. Um, allowing SSH traffic is always a bad idea. 
Uh, these are, all, uh, by the way, generally very flat networks. Um, you know, us walling them, our Splunk admin going, hey, do you need to get your Splunk working? Um, yes, we've done that. Uh, we've installed Linux on a box. Um, you know, always check your agent names. Uh, we're always changing your passwords uh, for you because you should be changing them often. And if you're not, we're going to. We'll wipe your backups always, right? That's just what we do. Um, PowerShell is in great gasps of what we do as well. Um, no, you can't get rid of DNS. That's just terrible. More keys. That's our key added in. Us taking surveillance photos of passwords on the whiteboard. <laughs> that's not a good place to put them. Uh, Docker should not be running on your laptop. Uh, this is kind of what our desktop would look like, right? Because we have all the teams open. Um, somebody futzing with the Palo Alto, at least trying to. Uh, Mudge sending beacons down. Uh, this is uh, just, you know, uh, SSH keys being sent in. Uh, me playing annoying noises because they had all in ones and they couldn't turn off the speakers. Oh, that was great. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll 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 meme them up, uh, change their logins to whatever we want. Um, we'll change their MODT, and they they forget it's there, and it's backdooring every time that MODT runs. Um, we will sometimes uh, if you ask us to stop. Sometimes we will if you're nice to us. Uh, just let our beacons live, and we'll stop messing with your box. Um, that actually is probably pretty pretty good advice if somebody's actively in your network uh, and you're trying to fight them, but really you should just be unplugging the internet. I played Tetris with, uh, I attempted, and this is a really bad demo, but I attempted to play uh, Tetris with somebody over their own TMUX session while in front of them. So I'm actually attached to their TMUX session and I'm trying to get BSD games to work. But you know, if you've lived in Debian land, that's actually kind of hard. Um, but I'm playing some worm with them, at least trying to. Uh, well, attempting to. It's actually kind of a fub. Why put it in here? Oh, well, there's their keys. We'll wall them for various effects. You know, their AWS access keys because they're leaving them in configs everywhere. Um, yes, it is our router. Um, some people don't know what CloudTrail is. It's great. Yes, the box is fucked. It is a technical term. And it's always, always DNS's problem. Uh, yes, we stole your passwords. Um, they, they Google weird shit all the time. One team decided to go this kind of advanced format for their passwords. Uh, they didn't know what Echo is. We find that a lot. A lot of kids don't know what, what is going on. Uh, we'll send a messages to their Splunk. Um, we'll actually interject bad Google's results. We've actually had it where Google would redirect to Bing and it would be the third page of Bing and that's all they could access. Uh, this is beacons coming in from Splunk as they started to manage their system for them. Somebody trying to do some art because they were bored and they didn't have anything to do. Uh, we, uh, we decided I did at least, that I was going to make a little bit of fun. I printed out this stupid um, piece of paper that said, hey, you're trying to get into SSH. Would you like to try Telnet instead? Slipped it under everybody's door. We actually got them back, a couple of them. Uh, there's the search warrant. Uh, that was fun. There's Clippy. <laughs> we got it back from a couple of teams. Uh, this is us ransomwareing their team. Um, yes, that happens a lot now. Uh, so this this is great. Uh, we made them take this photo for us, and uh, we made them apologize for trying to steal our firewall, which was their firewall, but it was really our firewall now. <laughs> we gave them back their firewall eventually, but uh, no, no guarantees there. 
then we just start deleting stuff, you know, from them. It's the same stick every year, practically. Uh, you know, running Docker, and we'll have beacons inside of Docker, and they'll never see them in there. Uh, we're starting to get beacons timing out now. Uh, me, D -D me DDing you random the TTY for shits, and that's always super fun when it goes BP hell. Um, Yep, and we're starting to delete Sys32 now. Um, teams start usually playing music at this point because there's not a whole lot they can do because we're, we're just starting to pop boxes now. Um, we disable their internet, you know, anything that we can do to destroy the box um, at this particular point. So you get the general idea. Um, we start deleting all their AWS instances, which are scored, which has a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, making sure to delete all the snapshots. All the beacons are dead. Uh, this is the write-up where they had to do the search and seizure. Uh, we'll actually kind of go back to that a little bit. This is us deleting Sys32 and the such. So as you can see, uh, we're up to all kinds of shenanigans. Uh, Obviously, we've had some disruptions this morning in numerous rays. Under my standing is the law enforcement officer entered the room and collected some device or devices. This is obviously concerning to the executive staff as we need to talk and make sure we understand all the facts we know. Um, this is the search and seizure. That was pretty good. We don't have any video of it, though. It wasn't recorded because they just kind of surprised us on it. Um, they even raided Red Team Room at one point. So as you can see, we, we generally have... Um, We generally have our, our standard memes. It just is just the Northeast corridor, right? Like there's there's themes for every corridor, and yeah. So so there's themes for every corridor, and then they go to the nationals and they fight there, and they have some real red teamers there, right? Like they'll actually bring out some stops. They have some amazing tools up there. A lot of them they don't release, and it's for good reason because they're very dangerous, actually. Um, and they're meant for only use in competitions, but uh, you can find it, right? Like now that you know this terminology it is CCDC, start trying to find some of the other, uh, some of the red teamer tools out there for it. There's some amazing stuff out there and we generally do tag it for CCDC. Um, if you take a look here, I got some URLs for you. If you want to check some stuff out for the Northeastern corridor, uh, you could do any CCDC, any CCDL, dot org you want to check out the national competitions you know maybe even uh become a red teamer there check out national ccdc.org but overall check your local colleges you never know they may want to participate in this and they haven't had anybody to actually start a program there right volunteer some time to starting a program get with a professor or something along those lines see if they already participate um you can help them with training uh become a red teamer for them set up a scenario for them let them attack you attack them that type of thing it's good fun and it allows you to kind of stretch your muscles as a red teamer without having to really worry about scope right like if you blow up a box who cares right but as like normal red team you know if you're, if you're trying to you know, like do pen testing you really can't just like destroy a box right you can't really simulate being a hacker because you're really you're not gonna you know delete the domain controller but in this competition you would um it's the best two days you could have right just just outright it's the best two days that you can possibly have and it allows you to test new tools and tactics in a controlled wild environment you can just let it loose and go to town as long as it doesn't leave the network they don't really care what it does uh, as long as it doesn't like make the box catch fire like literally catch fire i think we had that one year um but uh well i've had my 50 minutes omar you want to come on back